Good morning, everyone. Today's Monday. I think the 8th. August 8th. I come down um, by the Hathaway Bridge just to walk around a little bit. Rosie had an appointment this morning. Uh, I thought the water would be clear, but we've had so much rain that it fills up Deer Point Lake and then it comes through the dam into the bay. Uh, all the, the murkiness from the tannic acid and the other stuff in the leaves are washed into the water. From the rainwater, grounds the water. And so that's the, this is the bay, St. Andrews Bay. There's Hathaway Bridge right up there that we're in Panama City. If we cross that bridge, we'll be on Panama City Beach. And we got Rosie and Kim. Rosie's right up there playing in the water. And this is salt water. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear the waves splashing. I'm having to use the wireless microphone because it has a wind muff on it and it's really good about not picking up wind noise. The microphones in this camera will uh, they'll pick up the wind pretty bad. I don't know if you can make them out. Right under the water, um, on, where is it? Right here, that little bitty rock, there's some little hermit crabs. Should find one up a little closer. I can show it to you. I'm gonna walk over by the bridge in a minute. And see if we can see any of the pretty fish that are there. Huh? Is that a hermit crab or a snail? Hermit crab. Let's see. And there's a hermit crab. He lives inside that shell. You can see his legs. Let me see it, Rosie. You can see his little legs in there. Yeah, there's a little one. Yeah, you can see his legs through the hole in the top of his shell. They're just little crabs. They'll crawl around and when they outgrow their shell, they'll crawl out of it and they'll climb into a vacant shell or they will fight another crab and run him off and steal his shell. And that's the Gulf Coast College over there, uh, Florida University, FSU University campus. There's a couple snails right there. There's two on the, the sand. Or uh, hermit crabs, not snails. Oh, that is. Can, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it in the camera. It's overcast today. But there's yellow spots and then brown spots in the water out there. The yellow spots, uh, that's sand, and the brown is living uh, seagrass. You can walk all the way out to the buoys out there, and it's about waist deep. The buoys mark the channel coming from the boat ramp over there. I'm going to walk down to the bridge down here and set the camera up somewhere. I did not bring my big tripod. Um, I've got the little GoPro grip. It's just a camera pole, but the bottom opens up as a tripod. It's just really short. I think it's about 30 inches, but it may be enough. We can set it up. Um, I'm going to get the articles out of the van and we're going to head over there. All right, I, uh, I grabbed the articles. It's really hot today. If I get to sweating too bad before I get here, I may not 
do them because I don't want to sweat on them and ruin them. I've got a camera extension pole. It's made by GoPro called the El Grande. The very bottom of it, the bottom of the hand grip, has got a little tiny hole in it. And I took a, a quarter 20 bolt and I just kept working it in and out of the hole until the hole, I got the hole threaded. And I've got another smaller little camera pole that has a, it's got a, about a three inch wide tripod feet that, that connects to the bottom of it. And it's got a quarter 20 mount bolt on it. And so I unscrewed it and I screwed it into this camera pole because this one goes out about four feet, maybe a little taller. So it'll be the, the next best thing to having a tripod if I can mount it down here. How pretty the granite is, huge stones. Hurricane Michael really busted up the seawall here. And that walkway that Kim and Rosie is on, you can walk over the bridge, but we're not gonna cross it. I don't think my lungs would allow me to cross it. <laughs> you may be able to see some fish in the water. It's a little bit clearer over here. Right here, it, the bay goes on the other side of the road over there and out into the Gulf of Mexico. And the ocean just, uh, it flushes this, this murky water out. We have four tides here. Two highs and two lows every day. So the bay gets cleaned out quite quickly. I don't know what the tide is right now. We'll be able to see it when we get down here. I can see the current out there. It'll be easy to see if it's going out or coming in. Ooh, I smell dead fish. Yeah, the dark spots in the water is grass. Oh, I just seen a fish. Yeah, like I see them reflecting, they'll get down on the bottom and they're eating little shrimp and organisms out of the grass and they'll turn sideways while they're doing that and they'll flash. Bicycles behind us. Rosie, I'll scoot over. How you doing? Yeah, they changed this a lot from the last time we've been here. Look how pretty them rocks are. Quartz all in it. I'm sweating horribly bad. The boat's fishing. Looks like it's an outgoing tide. When the boats drop anchor, the anchor's on the front of the boat and the current will, will pull the back of the boat the direction that the tide's going. Yeah, you can see the bubbles on top. See them going to the left. Yes, an outgoing tide. Oh, 
bunch of rocks. They didn't have all this here the last time that we came here. I'm gonna go over here and find somewhere to set up. Somewhere I can stand the camera and I can sit down. I'm still not feeling well, you guys. I don't I don't know what's going on. My blood pressure wasn't extremely high. It was actually normal for me, you know, compared to what it's been the last couple of years, and still just feel really bad. I don't feel good at all. Oh yeah, it's definitely pouring out. the camera out a little bit and get it closer down in the water this thing goes out pretty good ways you got I'll show you there's another hermit crab right there there's a big one right down there between them two rocks bunch of them in there they're falling in rocks Rosie the moisture shells have cut you like a razor blade who yeah. it stinks the crab claw A bunch of little bitty fish. Let's see if I can get the camera down there. Hmm? She was lying? Nope. Oh, yeah, that's a pilot fish. Little old striped fish that are down there. A lot of them, whatever it is. They got the black stripes. They're white with black stripes. Oh, there's a bunch of them out there. See how hard the current's pulling right there past that pillar. You fall in right here, you'll have a very hard time getting to the shore. Yeah, it was sheephead. Normally this water's really, really clear. crystal clear when the when the clean gulf water starts pouring through here the tide change oh that's loud there's a joint right there in the bridge that's what you hear in the cars hitting on it I'm gonna go over here where it's not as loud Alright guys, I'm going to set the camera up. I think I'm going to sit right here. Well, golly, that's loud. So that's that expansion joint right there. Video is under video surveillance. I haven't seen no cameras. Let's see, maybe I can get over here. I 
All right, give me just a second. Let me uh, get this camera set up. All right, then find me a spot to sit down. Sorry about the noise. We walked around and there is nowhere to, um, there's nowhere quiet. Not here. Glasses are falling apart. I mean, I'm getting set up right now and um, we're going to share some, some articles. All right. that you guys possibly be able to see um, a pelican There's, they're out there but they're kind of far from the camera okay I'm getting this ready it's kind of hard there's no table to set this stuff on so I'm having to hold everything in my lap as I separate these pages Okay, let's see what we can do here. All right. Gonna get started with this article. This is titled, The Last Straw. Venge vengeful pack of walking wolves force a family to move from a fifth generation property. The year is decades past up to 2022. The locations, Taylor, Mississippi, Lafayette County, and Virginia Beach, Virginia, and First Landing State Park. The information source is multiple eyewitness testimony, multi-generational family members' encounters, attacks and injuries, and police reports, and government search and eradicate and eradicate agents. The preface, the following testimony is a sad, terrifying, yet heartfelt account from a property owner who, who is at his wit's end and fears for the life of his family. After inheriting rural property consistent of a couple of acres that had been in the family for five generations near Taylor, Mississippi, the owner starts having dangerous encounters of what the family calls walking wolves. These walking wolves have been around this property for generations, haunting, stalking, and hunting previous family members that lived there. Even the great-grandfather always kept a rifle inside the front door. The story picks up after the owner had numerous encounters and sightings of these creatures on his property, even sustaining an accidental gunshot wound from a young government agent that panicked when he saw one of these walking wolves collide into the owner and a shot was fired which killed this particular dog man but also injured the nearby owner sending him to the hospital. The dog man was buried on the property but when the owner and his dad went to check the grave the body was gone. The other walking wolves had removed it and wanted vengeance. This led to the final event that could have claimed his life and forced him to abandon his property and move hundreds of miles east to another part of the U.S. Previously, government search and uh, eradicate agents had reported to the owner that they had taken care of the problem. But more creatures appeared with a vengeance led by one massive alpha walking wolf that was different and bigger than the rest. The Last Straw, the owner's testimony. The owner was released from the hospital and in recovery. Meanwhile, government agents tell him that they've taken care of the problem and everything's good. I'm alright for now, but it's been a tough, stressful few, few days. I'm at my wife's house now because I no longer feel safe at my property at all. 
When a young agent showed up at my property and saw the walking wolf, he panicked and fired a shot, injuring me. His superior had him return with paperwork for me to sign, and I figured that meant I had more firepower behind me with these government agents now aware of the wolf problem and would show up to defend me if these creatures came back. I would have more backup. It was a win-win situation for me. These guys were at my property for about four or five days, and then they came knocking on my door saying that these things have changed course during our pursuit of them, and we need to leave here and meet up with another team to cut them off. There's about 30 of them in the pack. I was glad to hear this, thinking these walking wolves would not be coming back this way since the agents had them running. I told my wife everything was good and safe, so I thought. A few days later, my wife, who works in a city, which is about a 40-minute drive, was driving on a desolate road, which she always takes to get to the main highway. As with any other day, she has to leave about an hour early, when it's still dark outside, just barely getting light. Our usual ro routine was that I would have her wake me up before she leaves, and I would stand by the door watching to make sure she gets in her car safely before returning to bed myself. She was just at the end of our drive and something darts across her vehicle which causes her to ditch the vehicle on the side. The ditch wasn't deep, but the angle that her sedan was in prevented her from pulling out, or pulling it out. Her knowing the kind of condition I was in from recently returning from the hospital and in recovery, she was not going to call me. She instead decided to call AAA, but before she could do to do that, she sees something dart across in her rearview mirror. Being very scared, she, however, does decide to call me. I was not fully asleep yet, but groggy, and answered the phone. She was hysterical and crying. There's something here. There's something here. Come and get me. I wake up real quick, and my heart is racing, not knowing what's going on. The first thing I did was to call my dad and ask him to quickly come over and watch the kids so I could leave and go find my wife. I grabbed my bag of guns and hopped in my Fiera, barreling down the road hoping to catch up with her in time while she remained on the phone crying. I was praying to God, please let me get there in time, please let me get there in time. As I approached her car in the ditch, I had my bright headlights on. I angled my car to be in back of hers while surveying the area all around to see if any of these things were in sight. I helped my wife get out of her sedan and tell her to get into the driver's side of my vehicle and lock all the doors. I got out my tow chain and was going to hook it up to a slot in the back bumper of my wife's sedan and pull her out of the ditch. As I was doing this, I noticed two of these walking wolves approaching to my right. I aimed my gun at them ready to shoot. I noticed one of the wolves was the same one that had collided into me the day I accidentally got shot by the young government agent. I froze, waiting to see what they were going to do. All of a sudden, I hear this demonic growl. I've seen these creatures. I've heard them and even felt their strength and the kind of fear they project into you. But this demonic growl just felt wrong, different. And I panicked, thinking, oh no, one of these things has gotten behind me. I wonder how stupid could I be to let this happen. I always watch my six. As I'm slowly turning around, the other two walking wolves take off, and then I notice this other thing about 25 or 30 feet away from me. This wolf, jet black, almost 9 feet tall with red eyes. For as long as I've lived and lived on this property, I've never seen one the way this thing looked. Red eyes, a pronounced snout, like a timber wolf, just bigger. It looked like it had been around for a very long time and it knows how to deal with our kind no matter how skilled we are. This was the first time I felt beyond dread. I couldn't move. I was terrified. It had me. I was thinking, what in the world is this thing? I see what it is. I know what it is, but it's different. It's like a soldier type of thing. It had a demonic aura to it. When I looked into its eyes, it had a prehistoric intelligence or a Neanderthal intelligence, and it knew, it knew it was the Alpha. I'm sure it's destroyed anything and everything in its path. I soiled my pants, and this thing sniffed the air and grinned at me. 
When I was 20 years old, my dog Big Red saved me from three or four dogmen. But I know Big Red would have stood no chance against this thing. It would have been no match for him. This nine foot thing was too massive. This thing had me and all the while my wife is in the background crying and I can't do anything from being frozen in beyond fear and dread. I felt true fear for the first time, paralyzed. Any other time I would have been able to fire my gun, gun but this thing was like an alpha. I tell my wife, if this thing charges me, just leave and go. She says, I'm not leaving you. She pulls out her gun, being trained in firearm protection, and points it at this nine-foot alpha walking timber wolf, and it turns to look at her. I told her to put it down because in the end, she would just piss it off. I was wondering what the other two walking wolves I was wondering when the other two walking wolves took off, was there just three or were there more of them around? At the time my bag of guns was in the passenger seat of my vehicle, I was only a foot or two from the door on my vehicle. These walking wolves had flanked our passenger sides of both our vehicles while this thing was on the driver's side about 25 or 40, 30 feet away, ambush style. It was standing by the front of my wife's sedan. I tell her to look over in my bag on the seat and tell me what she sees in there. She finds a couple of handguns and a canister. I remembered I had gotten a canister from a friend that he uses in a SWAT team. I told her to hand it to me and instructed her to roll the windows up and close your eyes. Once I pull this canister, I'm going to jump in the car and when you hear it go off, then drive like hell. I had it in my hand and when I went to pull pull it, this thing saw the canister and jumped up causing me to not even give it a good because of being distracted at the way this thing was able to leap, which was unfathomable. I rolled the can in a discard kind of way and it went about three or four feet. At that moment, my wife, my wife peels out, leaving me holding on to the seat with my legs dangling out of the vehicle, which caused me to tear one of my stitches and then the canister goes off. My wife said when this thing leaped up, it was able to maneuver at an angle through the air. We had to go to the emergency room and I get my stitches repaired. When asked what had happened, I knew I couldn't tell them I had an encounter with one of these walking wolves, so I just said I had felt better and went for a jog and tore some stitches. We called the tow truck to pick up the sedan in the ditch and when we met the driver there, the car was torn up. The door was torn off, urine was all over the seats, the interior was torn to shreds, and the most disturbing thing was my, was my kids' teddy bears were missing from the back seat. These walking wolves had taken my kids' teddy bears, I think, to get their scent and locate them. I know I couldn't stay here anymore. My kids were in danger. It became personal for me. I got back in touch with a young government agent and told him what happened, and he questioned me on what it looked like and how big was it. So I told him. He said he would be sending guys over there again to my property. A few days go by and they have not arrived yet. I decided to sell my house and property and had a buyer. It's pretty much bought, so before the end of next month, I should be able to move my things out of there. I returned to the property, which was a big mistake. One night, my wife and kids were away visiting their aunt, and I was on the phone talking to a friend about what I had seen. Outward, I called my dad to come over. No, afterward, I called my dad to come over, and we were talking about what I had seen. I asked him if he had seen the nine-foot one, the one that looked like a giant timber wolf. He said he had never seen or heard of one like that. We were sitting in the living room talking and I hear tapping on the window. I already knew what it was. I went to the window with gun in hand and I saw the red eyes again. I felt I was ready for it this time. I aimed my gun and took a look over its right shoulder and at the same time it looked over its right shoulder and I saw six or seven pairs of glowing orange amber colored eyes from the wood line positioned in different areas. These were the only ones I could see but I knew there had to be more. It was like this alpha was telling me, if you shoot me then you die tonight. We went to the basement which was the safest part of the house which is reinforced concrete block 
with a steel cellar door. We took as many guns as we could and we stayed there taking shifts. Neither one of us slept a wink. In the morning we left and haven't been back. If we go back, it will be in the daytime and only to get our things. I just want people to know these things exist. They may not believe, but I'm telling you to be safe and know your surroundings. You don't have to believe in these things to be safe. Be aware of your surroundings. Treat an isolated wild area you may be going to like its habitat for dangerous predators and be aware. Carry protection or stay in a group. God forbid you run into one of these things. Even if you take my story with a grain of salt, be prepared Be prepared to do what you have to do. Don't challenge the existence of these things. They live for a challenge, and once you challenge it, these creatures will dominate you. I truly, truly believe these things smelled my scent on the body of the first dogman that was killed by the young government agent, and later when I buried it in the grave. They wanted revenge on me and used my wife to get to me by running in front of her car, causing her to ditch her car, which caused me to react and leave the house to find her and get me out in the open on a dark, isolated road. My wife didn't see the walking wolves after she ditched her car. She only saw them when I arrived, like they were waiting for me to get there. They were taunting me, and now they had my kids sent from taking the teddy bears. I'm at my wits end with this. The move, cross country and further developments. After moving hundreds of miles to east to the state of Maryland to escape the vengeful pack of walking wolves with a nine foot alpha leader, the previous owner of a fourth generation homestead in Taylor, Mississippi had more details to reveal about his move and what had happened since then. Hello everyone, I'm the guy formerly from Taylor, Mississippi and I'm up in Maryland now. I enjoyed the move and nothing too crazy happened. I just came back from a vacation at Virginia Beach and stayed at an Airbnb. I did a whole bunch of different things like taking my kids fishing, I went to an aquarium and on the last day I went to First Landing State Park for a little hike to enjoy nature. It was me, the wife, the kids and the dog. We were having a good time, but as I was there, I had the feeling I was being watched, though nothing crazy happened. This made me vigilant, especially from my severe experiences with these walking wolves, and I knew something wasn't right, but my wife and kids noticed nothing unusual that day. As we were making our way along the trail, I see a terrified couple in their early 30s running through the woods saying to us, run, just run. Starting to panic, but not wanting to run and scare my family, I suggested we all just head back to the car, which was at this point a 15 or 20 minute walk back. We got back to our car and the couple was loading up, getting ready to go, and I asked them what happened. They were about a thousand feet ahead of us and said they started hearing noises like brush moving all around them. It was around 3 p.m., so daylight, with no darkness. They heard something approaching them and they happened to look into the brush and saw a wolf's head, but the terrifying thing was that this head was level with theirs and then it smiled at them. They were on a slight hill and this beast was on a decline a few feet, so it must have been around seven to eight feet tall for the head to be at their same level. They took off and ran into us. Later we stopped at a gas station to get gas and while I was talking to my wife about what the couple had said to me, another guy at a pub overheard my conversation and spoke up and said he too had a strange encounter at First Landing State Park. He said he was camping there a few years ago and never went back after seeing the scariest thing he ever saw there. Him and his wife were in their tent and it was just getting dark. They heard things walking around after dark and thought it, thought it to be the local wildlife. He had bear spray with him and thought to make noises to scare it away. It walked up to the tent and pressed its face against the side and he knew it wasn't a normal animal. 
It seemed to walk away, so he slowly unzipped the tent door and peeked out. And just a few feet away was one of these creatures staring him in the face, and it smiled. He went back inside the tent and grabbed his bear spray, and this thing took off. He didn't sleep a wink, and when morning came, when morning light came, he woke his wife up and they packed up and left. His wife saw he was scared, so he told her what happened and they never went back. That was all I heard during my trip to Virginia Beach, but had the feeling I was probably being watched. I did have a good time. I continue to try and be safe. I believe once you get introduced to these creatures, you develop a sixth sense about when they are around watching. Almost something primitive about sensing their presence. Feeling the fear of someone pointing a gun in your face doesn't match the fear you feel coming face to face with one of these things. It brings up primal fear within you. As far as crawlers go, I believe they're cave dwellers and only come out at night. Most of the areas they're in are food source areas due to them being carnivores. Due to a shortage of what they regularly eat, you will get missing hikers and people. When I was at First Landing State Park in Virginia Beach, I saw a hiking couple with earbuds in their ears and not a care in the world, not aware of their surroundings, which made them more susceptible for an attack or abduction. These ambush predators are smart, and if you're busy listening to music with earbuds, bobbing your head, it's easy for one of these things to snatch you up. I believe they are three to four times stronger than a human and it's easy for them to overpower you and drag you into the woods. These things hunt on a nightly basis so they have to, they have to perfect their craft. Baltimore is not far from this park with from this park with lightly wooded areas where they can hide and people go missing every few months in this area. I believe their food sources are getting scarce uh, scarce so they are venturing out further beyond their territories. Maryland has a lot of cave systems as well. Soon I'm going to work for the forestry service at a desk job, but then we'll be placed in the field working on cases. I can't lie and say I'm not fearful to think of being in the woods that my job will require. When you run into one of these walking wolves, you're forced to accept the existence of them, and it's hard. You may know how some of them act, but you don't know how all of them do. You do stand a chance of getting away from them, but at times they may be in a bad mood. You're in their territory and they're protecting their young and it's very dangerous. There were plenty of times they could have killed me, but they let me go, though it scared me to death. I thought I knew these creatures, but I played right into their hands. They set a trap for me. They attacked my dad and sent him to the hospital. They lured me to, to where they wanted me and ganged up on me. They could have killed me right then and there. You may watch werewolf horror movies, but when you see something for real that you can't put a name to, it's absolutely terrifying. Most times they will bluff charge you, but with this 9 foot alpha it was different. I took off on my ATV and it chased me. And it was weird. It looked like it was falling over running, but it wasn't. It looked drunk when it ran, but it wasn't. When I, what I saw did not look like werewolves from the Underworld movie series. It looked more like a recent Marvel superhero movie that contained a werewolf creature. I befriended a Bigfoot creature for years, and it looked different than the movies portray. At my job, if they send me to an area where these walking wolves are ticked off, I think I will be going home. I don't want to deal with this. These walking wolves, crawlers, goat man, and what people have to go through dealing with them and talking to someone that doesn't believe them like law enforcement. However, I do believe law enforcement is aware of these creatures, though they may not uh, they might not have seen them, but they've heard about them and know of the missing people. I want to be... Let me start over. I'm sorry. I want to be there to let people know they are not crazy. Take it at face value that something is scaring people out there. I've learned to be a better person from all of this. Be aware of your surroundings and take safeguards. 
In conclusion, interestingly, a few comments relating to this man's testimony gave further consideration on the prowess, intelligence, and nature of these walking wolves. Comments were made that the nine-foot jet black alpha dogman that seemed to be the pack leader, the one that was much bigger than the rest, had not been seen before by any previous generational family members except this current owner living at that property was actually an ancient cryptid, much older than the rest, and that it comes from a different location. It was suggested that it didn't matter how far away the owner and his family moved, this ancient one could find them. That in itself is terrifying to consider. Already, upon moving hundreds of miles east to the east coast of the United States, this owner has come close to these walking wolves in a Virginia Beach State Park. Not seeing them himself, but feeling watched in the woods and being told by fleeing hikers that they saw a tall wolf in the brush smile at them and to run, just run. He has already talked with several people who have seen these creatures around this state park and he will not return. Notably, Virginia is a hot spot for dogman sightings, mutilations, and possibly being responsible for some missing people. It was even said Virginia is one of three underground birthing facility locations across the U.S. for these creatures. Then there is the calculating pack mentality and vengeful nature of these creatures to consider from this man's testimony. Number one, the young government agent, upon being terrified seeing one of these dogmen collide with the owner, fired a shot which killed the creature but also hit the owner sending him to the hospital. After burying the body, the owner and his father returned to find an empty grave. The rest of the pack had unearthed their fallen member and removed it from human habitation grounds. That is intelligence indeed. Number two, after, shooting of this, after the shooting of this creature and the body's removal from the grave by the other walking wolves, the harassment of the owner seemed to escalate. Whether this was an attempt to scare the owner or actually wait for an opportunity to lure, attack, and kill him out in the open is not clear. Number three, the owner's father was attacked after, see, after this series of events and before the owner had moved. He was injured, but he survived. The details are not available at this time. Was this more acts of retaliation for the shooting, simply to put fear into the current owner of the property, who seemed to be the main focus of their attention? Number four. Then there's the terrifying event. The event that could have claimed the life of the owner and very easily his wife. A calculating, planned event by these walking wolves that the owner is convinced was a setup. Waiting till early morning and just before light, when they knew his wife would be leaving for work, these walking wolves waited till the wife had gotten a few miles distance away from the security of the house and darted across her car, causing her to ditch the vehicle at an angle that stranded her car on the roadside. Knowing the owner would surely leave the security of his house and come to her aid, they could use that opportunity to attack him out in the open or in his car, and for the other monstrosity to appear, the one no one had seen before, the one the owner and his dad tried to figure out later what it was, a nine foot jet black red-eyed aged Neanderthal looking walking timber wolf that could leap in place and angle in the air. The one that caused the owner to soil himself in beyond fear. The one that sniffed the air of his urine and smiled at him, relishing in his fear. Was it going to kill him? Was this intimidation to let the owner know don't think about shooting me or any other pack members or you will die right here. Did the owner outsmart the, this alpha dog man by using a simple gas canister which caused the creature to leap away or was its intention just to scare him? Number five. Then there is the last straw. The realization by the owner when he met the tow truck back at his wife's ditched stranded car. The realization of what these things can do.
the car had been shredded and urinated on the inside and the door torn off and realization of how much his kids were now in danger. The walking wolves have taken his kids' teddy bears from the back seat and now had the scent of his kids. The owner figured they had gotten the scent of himself and his dad from when they both had buried the, do the dead dog man in the grave. But now the thought of these creatures having the scent of his kids from the teddy bears was indeed the last straw for him. Piled on top of that was the tapping on his living room window one night from this alpha dog man with red eyes while he and his dad were talking. And what waited in the wood line behind this alpha, a pack of orange, amber, eye colored walking wolves. Was this a final warning and taunting to the owner? Calculating vengeful and intelligent to say the least, hopefully the owner and his family will find a measure of peace now that they reside in a new area. If anything, the owner is a different person, is more aware of his surroundings than ever, and wants to help others that may encounter these things and let them know they are to be believed and are not alone. And that's it on these. I'm going to come over to the camera and show you guys I'm gonna try to show you the the pictures that are sent with these I don't know how well they're gonna come up but I'm definitely gonna see what we can do okay typical rural area in Taylor Mississippi This is the typical rural road of Taylor, Mississippi. Very wooded. And this is the artist drawing of the soldier, the, the big one, the walking wolf. Battery's about to die, so I'm trying to get these done kind of quick. <laughs> Sorry. Human to dog man size comparison. Uh, turn my screen back on. There we go. Jeez. That's a big, big, big fella there. Human to dog man. Uh, wolf and wolf size comparison. And this is the body description of the walking wolf. That's a very nasty looking creature. Here's an old artist drawing of a walking wolf. That looked very similar to that thing me and Kim's youngest boy seen when we was hunting in Carryville one year, but I thought it was a coyote. It wasn't three and a half to four feet tall, but it was on his back legs. Um, and here's a picture of the first landing state park in Virginia where the couple, the hikers encountered that thing. Right, guys that is it all the photographs I am fixing to start headed back I'm not feeling well and I just want to go home I want to go sit on the couch in the AC it's about I think it was 88 degrees but the humidity is extremely high today let me put these papers up get my notebook all right well I hope you all enjoyed that hope you found it interesting oh I just found some fishing weights I just found me some fishing weights there's little egg sinkers 
right there with the eye on the top got three of them and a swivel clip or a swivel somebody's lost a bunch of tackle all right camera's going to be moving around a lot i gotta try to shorten the handle on it there we go See if Kim and Rosie, Kim has a uh, telemed appointment with her daughter. To make sure she's not over here before I head back to the car. Some people out there in a boat fishing. Where they're at, it's mainly redfish and black drum. Somebody fishing down there. All right. Well, I'm going to head back to the car. Hope you guys enjoyed that article. Thank you, Brother Don, for sending those to us and doing the research and putting this stuff together for us. Um, Brother Don Moore does all the work in getting these articles so that we all can, can hear them. All of that effort, um, locating the articles, printing them up, organizing them, putting them together, and sending them to me is what he's doing. It's a lot of work. I'm trying to get it set up um, so I can start sending him a little bit of money to help him cover the cost of shipping. Some of these packs that he sent are... You know, 10, 10 to 12 dollars to ship them to get them to me quickly um, but he is on the ball very very much so very dependable very reliable and when he tells me he's sending articles they're coming right then and there he doesn't tell me he's going to send them he tells me they are coming but brother Don thank you I love you brother absolutely and we wouldn't be able to keep doing this if it weren't for you. Absolutely appreciate it. I gotta go down there where the car is. And get in the AC. And we're gonna get rolling. I wanna thank everyone who has sent prayers out for Sandy and her family. And for those that missed that when I posted it our sister Sandy reigns to busk has left uh, she went home to be with the Lord she's on the next journey but her family stuck here to deal with that temporary loss so please send prayers out for them all of her family and friends those that are closest to her Water's clearing up a lot. Just hoping to see some mullet jumping. That's why I'm keeping the camera filming that way. And this St. Andrews Bay, Deer Point, is back that direction. And if you continue past Deer Point, 20 miles or so, you'll eventually get to our house. And West Bay is that direction over there. The wind's starting to lay down finally. The whole purpose of using a wireless microphone today is because of the wind. Just give you guys an idea. I got it inside of my shirt. There's the clip holding the microphone. I done that so that it wouldn't be catching the wind. It's got a wind muff on it, but if the wind's blowing hard enough, it'll still cause some noise. And so I just put it inside my shirt. 
it's not so obvious that way either usually people see you with a camera and a microphone and then they tend to walk past you constantly and making all kind of noises and gestures trying to get on film usually it's children young children but there's also adult children that do the same thing you can see the different colors in the water the light colors is sand sand bottom just the water's got a light brown tint to it from all the rain oh, almost at the car we're in the van today <laughs> y'all have a good day if there's anything I can do for you please send me an email my email is standinggoatsrescue at yahoo.com I'm a little behind on them but I do get to them but God bless each and every one of you God bless your families and everything that you do I love you and absolutely will be seeing you guys soon but until that time please Please, please be safe. Be aware, especially if you're in the outdoors. We'll see you soon.